rate. Okay, we know the temperature is directly proportional. Activation energy is inversely proportional. Rate is inversely proportional to uh, rate. And so now we're going to talk about the effect of concentration. Okay, that's what that says. So that's what we're going to talk about. That's what I underlined. Okay. So now to talk about the effect on concentration, it turns out we need to look at something called the rate law, which is really an equation. Okay. <clears throat> and so let's say we have an equation, a chemical equation, where it's A goes to product. Okay, we want to figure out how A, the concentration of A, is going to impact our rate. All right? Well, we have a new equation for rate that we use here. It's called the rate law. It's rate equals K times A, the concentration of the reaction, raised to some power. That K is called my rate constant. We'll see what's all packed up in there in a little bit. And this N, this exponent on my concentration is called my rate order. And the rate order is what tells us that relationship between concentration and rate. Tells us relationship between rate and concentration. Okay, so it turns out that um, that value of exponent can be anything. Okay, it can be any decimal. It can be anything. Okay, but usually, and what we'll focus on is rate orders of zero, one, or two, because those are the most common. Really, one and two are the most common. Right, okay? so it's either going to be zero, one, or two. Now we have to think about what those would look like and what those mean. Okay. Well, first, uh, let's think about what should be the relationship between concentration and reactant. Okay. So, what are the three things that need to happen if, for a reaction to occur? Number one, they need to collide. Then they need to collide. Proper orientation, and then enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy, right? Okay, so if I have a flask of reactants, okay, all right, and I'm holding it right in front of your eyes, all right, and I add more reactant molecules, okay, like that, all right, like fish food, all right, do you think? The reactant molecules would collide more or less if I added more reactant molecules. More, yeah, they'd probably collide more. So do you think that would increase or decrease the rate? What's that? Increase, yeah. So usually, and uh, the one that makes the most sense is that increasing the concentration of the reactant increases the rate. Okay? But it can increase the rate in different ways, different magnitudes. Okay, and then, uh, par not paradoxically, but sometimes the rate actually isn't uh, impacted by the concentration. We'll talk about why that is, too, okay? <laughs> so anyways, uh, the way to really uh, view this, and the way I think it makes most sense, is to talk about what the rate law would look like graphically, okay? So if you plotted rate, come on, rate, what is going on here? P 
apparently if I touch something along here, that happens. Okay. As a function of concentration of A, you'll get basically three different functions, okay, depending on the relationship, right? So if, if N equals zero, which we call a zero order reactant, the rate is independent of the concentration. Okay, so what's that mean? If we increase the concentration or decrease the concentration, what happens to the rate? It would be the same. Nothing happens, okay? So graphically, that would look like this. A flat rate, no matter what happens to the concentration. Well, so that's what that's <laughs> so that seems strange, okay? If we add more react moles, they should collide more. They should react faster, okay? Well there's two there's a couple scenarios, two that macroscopically make the most sense. Um is one is uh reactions that have water okay, so reactions that occur in aqueous solution that have water as a reactant. Okay? So an example of that would be something like ammonia reacting with water, okay? So NH3 plus water, all right, makes NH4 plus and hydroxide. Spoil alert, this is a reaction between for a weak base, which we'll talk about chapter 16 slash 17. Or no, it's 15 slash 16. Depending on what edition you have. <laughs> so this is a reaction occurring in aqueous solution where water is a uh, reactant. Okay? So one thing that's important about this, okay, and you're probably going to want to write this down, okay, that in water, there's a lot of water. Let's set down. Okay. In water, there's a lot of water. Okay, I know. I'm just <laughs> okay. So in water. So the water's involved in reaction. So if I add more water to water that already has a lot of water, guess what? I'm not going to impact the rate very much. Okay. There's already a lot of water. Adding more water doesn't change the scenario. Okay, whereas adding ammonia, there's not a lot of ammonia in water. So if I add more ammonia, I'm adding ammonia, I'm making a bigger impact, okay? So when water is a reactant in the aqueous phase, it's often a zero-order reactant. It just doesn't matter. There's already so much that changing its concentration doesn't have an impact. It's already plentiful, okay? All right, so that's one example. That will pop up a lot when we talk about aqueous equilibria. Uh, the other example that pops up is if something is a solid, if we have a heterogeneous reaction, meaning a solid is reacting with other phases, like aqueous ions or gas phase molecules. Okay, so say burning coal. Okay, so you've got carbon sitting there in the solid phase, and oxygen in the atmosphere uh, is reacting with it. Okay. Most of the collision between carbon and oxygen is because of oxygen bumping into it. Carbon's just sitting there, okay? It's waiting for oxygen to bump into it. So adding more carbon doesn't change the rate because it's just sitting there. The collisions are really only impacted by how much oxygen there is to bump into it. Okay, and the same thing as the aqueous ions. So that's the other way we'll see uh, reactants uh, that are zero order, is that if it's a solid reactant, where it's reacting with gaseous molecules or aqueous ions. 
okay? Just because it's just sitting there waiting to be collided with, okay? It doesn't impact it. But most reactants that we're going to talk about and that you see in reactions are, do have an impact on rates, okay? And so the much more common ones are N equals 1, okay? So N equals 1 if N equals 1, the rate is directly proportional. We would call that a first order reactant. To the concentration. And so an N equals 1, our first order reactants graph would look like this. You look just like a straight line. All right, and then if you look at the equation, look at what we're plotting. We're plotting rate, which is our y axis, and then concentration, which is our x axis, and these. You know, the shape of these should make sense by just plotting what the, the value is. So if y rate equals x raised to the first, that's just a linear relationship. If n equals 0, we're plotting y equals x to the 0, that's just 1. So it's going to be the same value no matter what the rate is. Just, you know, the con whatever the rate constant is, that will be the, the flatness. Okay, so what if we were to plot something that looks like y equals x squared for n equals 2? What would that look like? Like parabola. Yeah. So it looks like this. So if n equals 2, The rate increases and decreases with the square. Yep. Of the change in concentration. All right, so if you doubled the concentration, your rate would increase by 2 squared, 4. If you tripled your concentration, 3 squares n, or 9, um, your uh, uh, rate would increase by a factor of 9. Okay, and that's where that parabolic, that x squared shapes come from. Okay.